Hello everybody, welcome to another video from me, Jason at Screen Photographic. I hope you're all doing very, very well. Um, lockdown is going to continue for a while yet, yeah, isn't it? And uh, well, I'm sure the end is in sight, and when it is, we'll go back to creating some wonderful images for you. Um, but in the meantime, we can still create, and that's what this video is uh, is about. Now, I've been asked by my good friend Rosie, Rosie May's dancer. You've probably seen her, uh, her work on Instagram and Facebook. Please do go and check it out, and I'll put links below in the video for you. She's asked, is it possible to create a watermark um, in software such as Photoshop or GIMP um, that you can use to protect your IP um, across all of her videos, any photographs that she might take? And yes, of course it is, and, and it's very, very easy to do. Uh, now, as always, I'm using uh, Ubuntu on Linux as my operating system, but GIMP is available on Windows, works exactly the same way. Uh, and things may look slightly different as I normally create these videos on my desktop computer. However, the monitor has packed up, so I'm using my laptop, so things may look a little bit different uh, in terms of workflow. Um, but GIMP will still work in exactly the same way, and that's the software we're going to use today. Um, so what we're going to do, we're going to open up GIMP. Uh, and there's a few prerequisites we'll need to do before we start. Uh, and this is the latest version of GIMP, which at the time of putting this video together is version 2.10.14. Uh, um, so you may be using a slightly older or slightly newer version of GIMP, depending on when you're watching this video. Um, but not a problem because it was, this tutorial will still work exactly the same way uh, with a basic straight out of the box setup. So first things first, what we're going to need to do is change our foreground colour by clicking on this box here. And we want to choose, um, we're going to choose grey. And the reason we're going to do that is that many, many watermarks, including the one we're going to make in this video, are white with a black drop shadow. So if you chose a white background, you wouldn't be able to see perhaps a text or image. And if you saw a black background, you wouldn't be able to see the drop shadow. And um, so grey is uh, a risk-free colour, if you like. So we're going to go up to File and we're going to go up to New. Uh, and for the width and size, you don't need to go very big to make a watermark. We're just going to make 400 by 400, so nice and square. In the Advanced Options, we want to make sure that we're filling with that foreground colour that we just selected. And you want to pick a 32-point floating bit integer just for the best possible quality image that you can export when you get to the end of the tutorial. Let's click OK. And we have our canvas. At the moment it's slightly square. You could of course make it slightly longer just by scaling the other way if you wanted to do so. Um, but we're not going to do that. First of all, what we're going to do, we're going to go to our text tool. Um, and you want quite a thick, heavy text here. I'm going to use Roboto Heavy. Um, you might have a preferred font, so you can simply click on this box here. Scroll to the font that you want. Um, on the left hand side there's a little demonstration of how each one looks um, or you can type in that font if you have it um, and if not if you go to edit and go to preferences um, and scroll down to where it says folders you can see here you've got a folder for brushes you've got a folder for fonts um, and anything that you drag into these can be used and imported into GIMP. You just simply need to shut down and restart the software and it'll drag these brushes and fonts in. So you can import one if you have the preferred one that you'd like to use. We want to change our font colour down here and we want to change that to white. Let's get to our text tool and 100 might be a little bit small. Um, that's not a problem. We need to type something in so we'll type in Robot. Okay, this is called a Roboto text. Robot is something that looks pretty good to type in. Uh, and what we're going to do is we're going to use our move tool, click anywhere on the text using this crosshair. And we're just going to square that up just a little bit more. Robot. Okay. Now our next stage from here is to yeah, accentuate this a little bit and make it look a little bit better. You could just have this as your, uh, your watermark if you wanted, you can drop the opacity, it's basic, it would do the job and just remove the background um, but let's try and make it a little bit more eye-catching so your work stands out so what we're going to want to do now, we're going to want to add the um, brush to this so there's a couple of ways you can add a new layer, you can either right click on the layer and go to new layer 
Well, you can click down here in this uh, small white box under the layers panel which appears in the bottom let's click on there let's click a new layer and let's call this brush uh, we'll have that set as a transparency now we'll come over to our brush tool which is this one here in the toolbar and we'll click um, now I've downloaded you'll see here we've got what looks like a leaf and I've downloaded these sort of floral leaf kind of brushes for using this tutorial um, there's some dragon tattoos there's some of the standard brushes that come with GIMP uh, and as I mentioned earlier if you've added any brushes that you found online into your brush folder um, then by all means use those we're just going to use this one I think um, I'm just going to, need to bring the size down let's bring that down to 100 uh, we'll have a go at the top of the R there so once and click twice that looks pretty cool doesn't it so what we're going to need to do now is we're going to, need to merge this down so that the brush layer and the text layer become one so let's right click and let's choose merge down and you'll see that they've now become one layer so the brush and the text are all now considered to be one item so any edits you apply on this layer will affect both of these together rather than perhaps just the brush if we kept the previous layer or just the robot text if we just have the text and we're working on that one uh, and the background layer of course can be turned on and off but we're not going to be working on that one for the time being we're just going to be working off the robot layer so what we'll do now is right click and choose alpha to selection and what this does this now selects everything within that layer so the brush and the text and you might see little marching ants going around the outside um, which indicates that everything is selected so let's go to start a new layer again so we'll right click we'll go to new layer and we're going to call this drop shadow and uh, we're just going to give um, a little bit of a drop shadow as a transparency to our um, to our canvas uh, and before we do that we just want to change the font the colour back to black so as you were so we'll change this to drop shadow having changed the foreground colour back to black uh, and we're going to do this using a transparency method again uh, and we're going to click OK now nice and simple let's choose our paint bucket tool with our foreground colour fill selected here uh, and let's just go over to any area of white text um, now this works off the crosshair rather than the actual paint bucket so if I move the paint bucket onto the text you'll see a little no entry sign appears just above it to the right of the crosshairs uh, the way GIMP works it is the crosshairs which is in essence the mouse pointer that you use for your editing so we've got black selected so let's just click there we go uh, now we can go to select in the top menu and select none and what we're going to do we're just going to take the move tool and we're just going to slightly move this to one side alright and we're going to move the bottom above the top and there's some drop shadowing in there that you can see that doesn't too bad now let's move this down and merge these layers down again merge down there we go uh, and we can just reduce the opacity Let's go down 25. That looks pretty good to me. Now, if you remove the background, it'd be quite difficult to see, but this essentially is perfect to use for a watermark, and you can use this on a YouTube video, you can use this on absolutely anything at all. Um, but just a couple of things to show you now. What you want to do, you want to export this, and you want to export this into a file. 
it's called untitled, let's call it watermark.png. Export it as a PNG rather than a JPEG because a JPEG will put a white background in, whereas a PNG will export it exactly as it is. So it will just export the text that we've done. You won't see this checkerboard background. It will essentially be saving the transparency, which is what you want. So click export. And now to see the fruits of your labor, if you go to file and open recent, you can open uh, any kind of image that you like. this gentleman here and let's go to where we've saved our um, our watermark you'll see it appears here and let's just drag this onto the image now it's a little bit small but of course you can move it there we go make sure you have the right thing selected there and of course you can move it to wherever you want. You can make it bigger, yes of course, you can resize that. Um, either using the settings here, um, you can resize along the top, or indeed when you make it, make it slightly bigger, but that's how you can make a watermark that you can export to any kind of video uh, anywhere that you want, um, or photograph. Another little tip for you in GIMP as well, is if you search on the internet for um, script free text watermark image watermark for GIMP and I'll put a link in the description below for you you can go to image watermark you can choose the photograph of the watermark that you want that can be anywhere at all um, so let's go to documents let's go to our YouTube folder let's go to our watermark and you can choose where you want that watermark to be placed just at the click of an image um, so there's lower left there's lower right there's upper left there's upper right let's put that in the upper right And there you go. Uh, there is a way you can use batch editing as well. There's a piece of software called BIMP, which I don't actually have on this particular laptop. Normally once it's installed, it appears just in this top section here. And that will allow you to batch edit photographs. So you can batch resize. Um, you can batch um, watermarks. So if you're working off, say, 120, 200 photos, whatever, uh, and you haven't got time to watermark each one individually, uh, you could use BIMP. Um, set it to look in the location with the watermark and it will do it all for you. Unfortunately I can't show you that today on uh, on this system. Um, but that's quick and easy, that's how you can create a watermark um, or a thumbnail perhaps for a YouTube channel or anything at all. Um, set the sizing to how you want, 400 by 400 is a little bit square. Um, if you are using it on a photograph you might want to go a little bit longer. Um, you can use something like a Wacom tablet to bring in your signature if you want to. Uh, and you can use images as well, um, although they may interfere a little bit with the um, photograph uh, or the video if there's a background image as well. So uh, hopefully you found this useful. Hopefully you can now start creating your own watermarks, um, however you want them to look, um, very quickly, very easily. This will take you less than two minutes. Um, and start protecting your IP. Uh, if you did find this useful, please like, subscribe and share. It really does mean a lot, and I'll see you all very, very soon in the next video. You all look after yourselves now. Bye.